सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली समथिंग ट्रूली अनयूजल एंड अनएक्सपेक्टेड है पाकिस्तान टूडे पाकिस्तानी स्पेशल कोर्ट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ थ्री सीनियर जजेस फ्रॉम थ्री हाई कोर्ट that is peshawar sindh and lahore the head of the court is the chief justice of peshawar high court they with the majority of 2 is to 1 have convicted former army chief and president parvez musharraf for high treason i repeat high treason and they have sentenced him to death now we know that it's most unlikely that this death sentence will be carried out Musharraf is in exile he has been in exile and safe for quite some time he does a little bit of drama here and there when the court pressure becomes great then he says i am sick mujhe bachao uh, otherwise he says i am coming back to my country and i am launching a new coalition and i will win back power he is quite a delusional fellow so delusional that you will see it on the screen once i had even written a national interest which was headlined simply general musharraf brackets deluded as they say retired i said deluded so he is delusional but right now he is caught because he has now become pakistan's he is not pakistan's first former head of state to have a death sentence on him that was zulfikar ali bhutto he was handed out a death sentence by pakistani judiciary while pakistan was ruled by a dictator much more draconian than musharraf ever was that is zia ul haq he also was hanged once again unlikely that any such fate will finally befall general musharraf there is still an appeal possible to the supreme court and clemency with the president of pakistan in any case he is right now overseas but this is very significant for one specific reason this tells you something about a changing equation in the power balance of institutions in pakistan in pakistan the one institution that owns everything from its nuclear weapons to its sugar factories literally is the pakistani army in fact very often if you go to a pakistani restaurant or a hotel and take up pick up your sachet of sugar to put in your coffee or tea just check it out it says very often it might say more likely than not it will say manufactured by some factory under the fauji foundation so the army in pakistan is both uh, the owner of pakistan's ideology it's the owner of pakistan's real estate it's the owner of pakistan's nuclear weapons foreign policy strategic policy it's also the uh, owner of a lot of pakistan's economy now you had not expected pakistani army to be challenged by any institution and anybody who's tried to challenge them in the past has ended up either in the gutter uh, or i mean not literally but the metaphorical equivalent of having their body floating uh, in the jhelum river nawaz sharif tried that and nawaz sharif ended up in jail and in exile so in this power equation the institution that has taken on the pakistani army and has court twice in quick succession is the pakistani judiciary we in india tend to look at pakistan in, a, in very simplistic terms we think it's a dictatorship it's an islamic dictatorship it's a university of jihad etc etc it's a talibanizing country but pakistan is multi layered as well it's a very complicated country so there the judiciary is now striking back two things it's done one we spoke about earlier it stopped until the last day the current army chief general bajwa's extension with which imran khan's government had given him for 3 years finally <clears throat> on the last day by humiliating him till the last day dragging his name into a controversy till the last day till his last day in service they gave him a 6 month reprieve so pakistan's almighty army chief right now is on a 6 month probation and at the mercy of his government and the judiciary that had not happened before that was not expected and now the same judiciary has handed over a death sentence 
to not just a former head of state, as we told you, another head of state had been given a death sentence earlier, but that was a civilian. It's the first time a former army chief and former president, and he's not been given a death sentence for murdering uh, some uh, somebody he didn't like. This is a death sentence for high treason. So think about it. Think about the moral, political, ideological, and institutional dimension of a former Pakistani army chief having been convicted for high treason. And this is under a High Treason Act that Zulfikar Ali Bhutto had, had enacted in 1973. It's called High Treason Punishment Act of 1973. So an act enacted by a civilian government has now been used to hand over a death sentence to a former army chief and former president. That's a big change in Pakistan. So two blows that Pakistan's judiciary has struck at the Pakistani army. So this tells you that one, democratic impulse in Pakistan is not all non-existent, that institutions survive. Some fight back, some don't fight back. But in this case, the judiciary has fought back. And they have struck twice at the army as an institution. And the army has had to take this humiliation with some humility, if I may say so. But I don't think they'll take it with humility. They must be seething, but I don't know. Uh, and we have to watch this space to see how they might react. Now, why would they have bothered the Pakistan army? whether Musharraf was convicted or not. Musharraf had left a long time back. Musharraf had gone out in disgrace. He's been in exile. He's been arrested in the past, though treated very well. Nobody quite cares for him in Pakistan anymore. So why should the Pakistani army bother? That's because Pakistani army looks at itself as the only true institution in Pakistan that transcends the tenure of all rulers, all history, and all times in Pakistan. They see themselves as the guardians, first of all, of Pakistan's ideology. So for them to have one of their top people questioned like this, or for them to have their top man, that is the army chief, being questioned for his extension by another democratic civilian institution like the judiciary is a big loss of face. And I will take you back to 2013 when Nawaz Sharif had come to power. And Nawaz Sharif had said, look, I want, to, I want no distinction, I want no division of powers between the army and the elected government. I have a majority. What kind of a system is this? Uh, half a partridge, half a quail. Uh, I've mentioned this before. Adha titar, adha bater. So it either be a partridge or a quail. So say I am the partridge, I have a majority, I am the civilian, so I will call the shots. And he had pressed these charges against Musharraf and he wanted Musharraf prosecuted quickly, expeditiously and punished. Remember, Musharraf had earlier carried out a coup against Nawaz Sharif in 1999. He had put him in prison and later exiled him under Saudi pressure. There was that history as well. At that point, when it did look like that Nawaz Sharif was not, not sort of succumbing to persuasion from the army not to do this, not to go after the institution of the army in a way, then army chief, General Raheel Sharif had issued a statement which was quite interesting uh, and quite important. In fact, he had gone on to say that, look, army will not just be uh, sitting like this and uh, not responding to this. And uh, he said that this was truly a case of army having to preserve its own dignity and institutional pride. And he said that he was responding to, again, quote unquote, Concerns of soldiers on undue criticism of the army in recent days. So he had made it quite clear that he did not appreciate and the army did not appreciate action against Musharraf. Now, six years later, the same Musharraf has been held guilty of high treason, handed over a death sentence. That is the big institutional shift in Pakistan that we need to remember because these things are not minor. In that country, for any civilian institution to question the armed forces, the army. Even today, the kind of government they have, it's described as a hybrid government. Hybrid because elected prime minister has some powers, the army has some powers. In fact, the key powers, that is nuclear weapons, strategic policy, India policy, Kashmir policy, America policy, China policy, it's all controlled by Pakistan's army. Uh, so this is that hybridized arrangement. In that hybridized arrangement, 
for one institution to rise up, for Pakistani judiciary to rise up and to challenge this one shows a great deal of spine by Pakistani judiciary and I hope judiciary in other countries, other democracies, particularly democracies that are under pressure from various dictatorial forces and authoritarian tendencies, they will take heart from this that judges can show some courage and stand up for their, their institutions. And second, I think this will further weaken Imran Khan because he, if anything, and his government under the army's pressure, but first of all, they were humiliated because the Supreme Court in Pakistan did not honor this government's, Imran Khan government's decision to give the current army chief a three-year extension. They finally struck it down and gave him only six months. Uh, and second, because his government, Imran's government had tried its damnedest to prevent this order from coming out. To the extent that in November they had filed a case, a filed a petition in Islamabad High Court saying that the special court should be prohibited from issuing this order. Special court initially said no, but Islamabad High Court's orders don't apply to us. Islamabad High Court persisted. So then the special court said, all right, government can set up a new prosecution team. Imran Khan then threw out the old prosecution team brought in a new prosecution team. They said you can't just prosecute Musharraf, you have to also catch hold of Shaukat Aziz who was his prime minister. You have to also catch the gentleman who was then chief justice of Pakistan and you have to also similarly catch other people because they must have advised Musharraf to do this. Special court threw all that out. They said this is stalling tactics and they have done this. So this <coughs> in my view is a big change in Pakistan's history. Having said that, I will conclude with a little personal story. Uh, in 2002, uh, my friends Najam and Jugnu Sethi, in fact, you should check out Najam Sethi's daily show, Sethi Se Sawal. He is the best informed uh, commentator on, and the, among the brave, bravest on Pakistani politics. Uh, they set up a newspaper called the Daily Times and I was among the three Indians they invited to speak at a series of functions in Peshawar, Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi to launch that newspaper. The other two were Arundhati Roy and Enron. So I said in one of those events, I think in Lahore, I said that look, you are as imperfect a dictatorship as we in India are an imperfect democracy. Why? Because I said you haven't quite taken away, denied all your citizens all the rights that a genuine dictatorship must do, like say Iraq, like say China, or like North Korea, those are real dictatorships. Aap kya hai? You have some judiciary going, you have media going, you are so loose in your dictatorship that someone like me can come and stand in front of an audience uh, while op parakram is going on and we are about to go to war any moment it looks like. And I can make these statements. So you are not a perfect dictatorship. Similarly, we in India are not a perfect democracy to the extent that we haven't quite given all our citizens the freedoms and the rights that a classical democracy with a constitution like India's should give. It caused a bit of buzz uh, in India and I got a fair bit of bad press from uh, people of the right uh, who, were, who had just, big, just discovered internet and I think I got my first round of abuse and trolling much before Twitter was invented for having said this. But once again, what has happened right now proves that point. Because Pakistan is a dictatorship, has been a military dictatorship, military is the institutional owner of Pakistan, but the other institutions have not all been, have ever been fully killed and buried. Even in Zia's times, even the sentencing of Bhutto, one Supreme Court judge, Dorab Patel, had dissented. Similarly, even under Zia, a lot of Pakistani media had spoken out and activists and civil society had set up movement of restoration for democracy. So those are the sort of intricacies of Pakistani politics that we need to understand because it's such an important country for us. And that's, that's what this verdict once again uh, points to.